good, Team Grips. Evan here for Grips.com. I am joining you from the office of uh, world champion Greg Merson. As you can see, we got the WSOP.com promo, and we got the vape over on the left-hand side too. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about the importance of discipline and total immersion training. So, first off, thumbs up if you remember the exercise, and uh, no thumbs up if you didn't. If you forget what I'm talking about, go back to last week's video. Uh, if you now, if you've ever heard of total immersion training, what uh, it basically means is just being fully immersed in something, doing it all the time. You know, diving in, foot first, head first, into the deep end, whatever you want to call it. Just, just get the fuck in there. So I'm going to basically tell you about how you can create your own total immersion training over the next uh, days, weeks, months, years, and get the maximum benefit out of everything that you do. So this last week, I visited a couple of my good buddies in New York City. Uh, they were Mr. Anthony Gregg and Mr. Greg Merson, who collectively have $20 million in tournament winnings between the two of them. These guys definitely know a thing or two about what they're doing when it comes to the game of poker. Um, and for those of you who are lucky enough to be present, we had a pretty epic stream with Greg Merson. He was last night. I'm recording this on uh, Thursday night. And for those of you who didn't get to be present, well, follow my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash grip, so that you can get in on the next one. Because Greggy says, no replays, no one studying my game. If they're there, cool. And if they're not, too bad. Um, so between playing, um, I also learned a lot from being around these guys. They're, they're very much champions in their own right. And I got reminded of some things I learned in the past from, from some other champions who are, you know, they aren't the huge, huge name players, but they're, they're pretty big name players, like Griffin Benger and a guy named Nuts and Ho. If you don't know him, look him up. N-U-T-S-I-N-H-O. You'll see what I'm talking about. He won, like, millions playing uh, online cash. So basically my key takeaway from this last week was the people who are the most successful in any discipline are the ones that spend the most time in and around that field of study. Simple. It's not a specific way of how you're studying, it's just how much exposure you have to it. The more, the better, as long as it's quality exposure, not mindless exposure. And uh, as Lil Wayne said, repetition is the father of learning, intelligence, awareness, Preparation, all that comes from repetition. Money, bitches, all that comes from repetition. TV spots and awards, repetition. Basically, what I'm telling you and what Lil Wayne was telling you is that the secret to success is repetition. Okay, so that's, that's the biggest one. That's the big takeaway. Now I'm going to get into what else I learned out here because there were lots of golden nuggets on this last leg of the vacation. By the way, really pumped to get back home for uh, some live streaming tomorrow. Team Grips, Tom Games, hell yeah. Uh, so what I learned with Tony, first one was the importance of unwinding and relaxing. Uh, we spent time at a Russian banya, which is kind of like a spa, and their culture involves you know, a lot of hard work and a lot of relaxation, detox, eliminating of the stresses. Uh, and I saw, you know, like they, they have, they have sauna strategies. They have spa strategies to get the max value out of the relaxation process. And, uh, it's something that I think is very overlooked in the work driven society. And we usually lose over like, Oh, what can I do more? How can I add more stuff? How can I take on more responsibility? Do more, do this, do that. Sometimes you just got to take time to relax because if you don't, you aren't going to have the energy to perform. It doesn't matter how much more stuff you pack in there, you aren't going to be able to uh, act on it. Likewise, you need proper fuel in the tank. When I was with Tony, we had great food, fresh juices, fresh veggies. And despite not getting much sleep, because it is New York, uh, I still had plenty of energy and I felt great, which, which was a bit of a surprise to me because I usually think I need more sleep. I probably just don't eat as good as I should be. I also realized the importance of support and giving uh, because, you know, in a lot of ways, money is what makes the world go round. And sometimes someone can do a lot more with that money than you can. You know, there's some point where you're like, okay, I have enough money, whereas this guy doesn't have any money and he's trying to do something big. Maybe, maybe I'll invest in him. Maybe I'll help him out. Um, we gave like 100 bucks to Jamie Staples, I think 111 and 11. And you should have seen the happiness. And the reason we did it, you know, we spent, we spent a good part of the day watching a stream and it was a lot of fun. And, you know, He's out there trying to do something big. He's trying to do something special. So, you know, 
people like me and Tony who have been fortunate, yeah, we can give back, we can help this kid so that he can, you know, move along with his dream faster and progress with his dream faster because he is helping people. He is uh, creating ripples of change. Now, I'm not just saying, you know, give your money to everybody you see. Uh, if you think someone's just going to waste your money or waste a gift that you give them, then you should probably keep it for yourself or try to find someone else to give it to. But it's important to recognize that there is a lot of value to not just holding on to everything that you have and sharing it in and amongst the people who are going to be able to make good use of it, maybe make better use of it than you could yourself. And this is a, in a case where you don't need it. You know, if you want it, that's one thing. If you need it, you should probably keep it. Okay. Uh, I also learned the importance of doing you. Uh, Tony's method may not be the most common one used for success, and you know it's very different from Greggy's method. Greggy's like, you know, how does how does he just like play all the high stakes tournaments? Well, it's because he's doing something that works for him. Um, I'll, I'll get into the method a little bit more later, but the the main thing I want to harp on is I've tried other people's methods, and I just get a weird feeling in my gut, like, oh, something's wrong. Like this isn't the way I should be going about it. Even though it works for someone else, doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And, you know, you find it's hard to stick it out. So it's important to understand, okay, that, that doesn't mean, like, you're, you're not going to excel at this, this thing you want to do. You're probably just trying to apply the wrong method. Uh, some people learn better from reading. Some learn better from listening to things. Some learn better from firsthand experience. And you got to figure out what's going to work for you um, because... Uh, that's what's going to get you the results in the fastest way and make the learning process and the development process as enjoyable and fun as possible. And fun's what keeps you on the track. So, what I learned with Greggy is that a good support system is key. When he lived with me in uh, 2011 and 2012, I made sure everything was handled, our food was taken care of, our yoga was taken care of. He just had to focus on his play and that was it. Now uh, he's got a wonderful girlfriend, Julie, who helps him with all of that. The place is spotless, you know, it feels very calm in the environment and he can just focus on his plane because there's no distractions, no other tasks that he needs to take care of. Everything is as it needs to be so that he can just focus and execute. Um, I also saw there's, there's no better fuel for passion. <laughs> this guy, this guy just loves the game. He just loves playing. Like when he lived with me, five to 10,000 hands a day. Now he has dropped it down to a more modest 1,500 to 4,000 hands every day never stops grinding, never stops playing, because he recognizes that momentum is everything. Uh, once you have momentum, you got to keep rolling with it. You want to keep rolling with it because it can take you a lot of places. Don't let it stop once you get it going, and also focus on discipline. He sets goals for how many hands he's going to play, and he sticks to them. He honors that commitment, which gets him momentum, which gets him confident he can do more things, more challenging things, take on more responsibility, take on more tasks, but when he's ready to. Again, we don't want to rush the process. We want to slowly build and slowly improve so that we can handle the things that we take on and not get uh, defeated or discouraged. Okay. Yeah, when you have a win, it's easier to find another win. So like I said before, give yourself the opportunity to win uh, as often as possible. What else do we got? Okay, so that's what we learned. And now I know, I know what you might be thinking. What can I do with this stuff, Grips? Give me more specifics. You're the teacher, so teach me. Okay, 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 okay. Here are some examples of full immersion study methods so that you can teach yourself to learn and not be too dependent on anyone else. Uh, first one, Greggy taught us, just playing all the fucking time. That's it. Get up, grind. Make sure you got your food in you, grind. Take a break, grind. Go to sleep, dream about grinding. Wake up, do it again. Uh, like I told you guys, five to 10,000 hands a day in 2012, that's how he ultimately won the main event. And now it's, it's more modest, but it doesn't matter. One, two, two, four, five, 10, 10, 20, 25, 50, same drive, same will to win. Uh, the man's on top of it, and that's why he gets results. Uh, another method shown by Tony, watch hands, no, watch videos and watch hands. Um, even when he's not watching videos, Tony will be following, you know, the text coverage of the WPT updates or the EPT updates. Doesn't need to be watching the video. He's not watching for stimulation. He will actually read the hands because he wants to learn and see, oh, what are these guys doing? Huh, maybe there's something to be learned from that. And he'll put the pieces together in his brain and figure it out. He's not grinding all the time, like clicking the button, but his mind is grinding all the time, becoming a better player, thinking more clearly about the game, being very much in tune with what's happening in that world. 
Uh, Griff was another great example of this. I don't think he ever missed an EPD broadcast, and since then, you know, he's won a high roller, gone extremely deep in the main event, won the shark cage, lots of things. Um, you know, you got to know what people are up to in the environment that you want to be competing in, and if you want, and that's the only way you can be prepared when your opportunity comes. But make sure you keep it relevant to you. Uh, you know, if you're playing, I don't know, ten dollar tournaments. Maybe you don't need to be railing the Super Tuesday. Maybe you don't need to be railing the EBT Super High Roller. You can do it for entertainment, but if you're like doing it for learning process where it's not super relevant to what you're playing, you may just get discouraged and be like, oh, like, well, how could I ever get there? Don't watch the thing that's super far out of reach. Watch something that's very much relevant to you and close to you so that you can actually picture yourself being there. I remember uh, Nuts and Ho, when he wasn't playing, he would be watching the high stakes games, but that's because he was playing the high stakes games. And I'm sure when he was grinding 2-4, he would be watching 3-6 games. When he was playing 3-6, he'd be watching 5-10 games because he's like, okay, what are the people doing at the next level that I'm not? Not what are people doing 10 levels above me because there's going to be all this stuff in between that you don't understand. But what are the ones at the next level doing? Uh, because you can kind of understand what's going on there. There won't be a huge gap. And then once you get there, you can say, okay, what are the people at the next level doing? Get there. Next level. Get there. And eventually you get to the top. But if you try to watch the top from the bottom and try to figure out what's going on, there's going to be too much happening for you to be able to really be in tune with what's what's going on. Uh, and you you just you won't get a great learning process out of it. Okay, so yeah, good stuff there. And okay, I get this one a lot. You know, grips. What is the best way for me to learn? You told me some ways to learn. Those are some ways you can immerse yourself where you're exposed to the game all the time and constantly thinking about the game and developing your process. But what is the best way to learn? If you really want to know, okay, fine. I'll give you an answer, but it's not going to be the one you wanted. It's the classic poker answer when you post a hand, you're like, what do I do with pocket sixes? Depends. The best way to learn is to find an instructor who resonates with you. I may like watching uh, Ben Salsky play poker, uh, but maybe you don't like watching it. Maybe you prefer an Aaron Jones. Maybe you prefer a Lucky Chewy. I really enjoy watching King Dan. Not everyone's going to enjoy watching Dan Smith, but I do, so those are the videos I watch. Um, if you don't enjoy someone's teaching style, you're going to have a really hard time taking in the information. You just kind of get your defenders up and just kind of shut it out, and it's you're not going to learn. It's that simple. So you need to find someone that resonates with you. There are plenty of great training sites, plenty of books, uh, plenty of live feed sites, and plenty of great streamers out there. So just look around. Don't wait for someone to be like, you know, you're like, oh, who should I watch? What should I do? What was me? And you're just asking, you're waiting for someone to say like, okay, this is the guy. The guy that is my guy may not be the guy that's the guy for you. So take the time yourself to Watch the free content, take the free trials, the free memberships to the various sites and find the people who resonate with you and study them because the people that work for me are going to be different than the people who work for Greggy, than the people who work for Tony, than the people who work for Griff, than the people who work for Rich, than the people who work for you. Some of them may overlap, but they won't all be the same. And um, yeah, when you find people who like a certain instructor, they may be able to recommend another instructor to you because they'll know what kind of resonates better. But for your starting point, just, just start experimenting. Just go out there and feel it out and, and find who, who, who resonates with you. Okay? And also make sure you are applying what you learn uh, so that you're shaping your own game, not just imitating others. You don't want to just learn, 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 and never play. You got to learn, apply. Learn, apply. Set a new goal, learn, apply, and repeat the process uh, so that you can actually internalize and understand it um, rather than, you know, not really be able to relate to the information. That's why it's important to mix. Okay? So the key here is discipline of taking the time to learn and then follow through and actually taking the time to play. If you're sloppy with your study, you won't get results. Likewise, if you're trying to do a method that you probably won't stick with, you're also not going to get results. It's very simple. Um, or, you know, if you're just miserable in general, you're not going to want to take the time to study. So let's think about what we can do to change our mind state so that we can, um, you know, put ourselves in a position to really maximize our learning experience. And this is very important, thinking about the off the table stuff, because your poker performance is a reflection of how you manage yourself day to day. Downswings can usually be predicted. My last downswing, I was totally overwhelmed with all the other tasks I was trying to take on. How the fuck was I going to perform my best when I was playing? Simple. Um, 
You got to look at how you're taking care of yourself and if you're honoring your priorities. If you don't know what your priorities are, you better figure them out. Uh, because if you can control your life off the felt, you can control your life on the felt and your destiny on the felt. And if you can't control your life off the felt, then now is not a time for you to be in the gambling space because it is a dangerous, risky space with tons of temptations. And if you aren't in a strong, grounded place, it just might take you over. So, can you handle commitment? Uh, this week's call to action is all about testing that out. Just, just a little test, nothing too crazy. Uh, and finding out, um, and finding something that's going to give you power and a sense of control because a regular discipline will give you power and if you can have control on a discipline, you can have control on the felt. If you can master some other art, poker's nothing. All right, so something which you can then bring over the table and be a master of your domain. That's what we want, right? We want to be the masters, we want to be the controller, uh, full power over our own destiny. So some examples that you might want to consider, getting a personal trainer, joining a running or a swimming club, engaging in a martial arts practice, or studying a specific form of yoga. Obviously, there are going to be other options as well, but I, I encourage a physical discipline because poker is our mental discipline, all right? And we don't want to do too much mental or too much physical. We want to do a little bit of both so that both the mind and the body are both honored. Um, and the key, okay, guys, this is the big one, that the key is having a good teacher. These are complicated disciplines. There's a lot going on with them, and you don't want to try to figure these things out on your own because you may get hurt, you may get injured, you may just do it wrong. And if someone's already done it properly before, why do you need to figure it out on your own? You know, you can figure some of it out on your own, but it's helpful to have someone guide you through the process. So just seek out an expert. I know it's like, oh, man, personal training costs this much and yoga costs like $20 for a class what am I gonna do trust me if you actually have a good instructor it's going to pay off because someone's gonna show you how to do it properly so you get the benefits right away instead of wasting time mucking around the gym not knowing uh, what the proper way to go about things is and the money you invest will pay dividends because you will actually experience growth and development which will enhance your ability to make more money. You will actually get the benefits that the practice is supposed to give you when it's done properly, as opposed to just going through the motions and uh, not getting much out of it. You're also just going to feel better, uh, which is going to, you know, if you feel good, all right, I could take the time to study. I can take the time to, uh, you know, run through some hands. If you feel terrible, you're not going to want to do that. So that's a good trick. Um, but remember, Okay, so that like those are the options, and that's why you should do it. You don't need to start tomorrow. You don't need to start your discipline tomorrow because we don't want to jump in too fast. We can totally immerse ourselves in something we're already doing, which is the poker thing. But for new things, we want to, you know, wade in through the shallow end. So take this week to think about what you want to have happen in February. What discipline might work for you? Do some Google searching. Read through the comments in this video and see what practices other people are doing. Uh, that you know might resonate with you because like I said again everyone's different but everyone's gonna have a practice that's like oh yeah that's the one for me that's the one I'm gonna do and then you stick with that boom you develop you develop you develop and then you just have so much confidence and power you carry over your poker game boom crush everyone so figure that out and let your commitment date begin in February but for now you got a week week and a half take your time figure it out do some research see what works as for me, since this year is all about action, you know, it's my year, so I gotta be taking action. I can't just be doing talking. So, for, for uh, fitness, I've joined Elliot Hulse's Strength Camp. It's like a video internet kind of coaching, personal training thing. I already have a gym membership, and now I'm going to know what to do at the gym. Uh, so, we'll see how that goes. I'm also gonna join a Kundalini yoga studio because I like, I like yogas that are like very much focused on the breathing and they're also focused on like flowing and motions and shit and movement so i'm going to uh try to commit to that one and see how that goes for a month if it doesn't work i'll try another form of yoga but i'm going to at least ride it out uh, i've also hired a nutritionist so i can actually have the fuel to uh balance out all the energy i'm expelling in these other activities because you got to be recharging recharging the machine and i'm going to read some books on breathing yes books on breathing because that's the greatest source of energy and I'm going to draw from a few different disciplines and see which one, like I said, resonates with me. Um, as for my follow through on these things, you know, because I just have the plan for February, 
hasn't gone into action yet. You'll be hearing about those in upcoming videos. And as for the results on my game, well, you can see those on the live stream at twitch.tv forward slash grips. Hopefully with everything a little bit more lined up and a little bit more in control, uh, the trajectory will be on the up and up as opposed to the down and down that we had while we were trying to do way too many things at once. But hey, we did have fun with it at least. So, yeah, make sure you follow twitch.tv forward slash grips so you can be notified when either I go live or when some of the other team grips to pros go live because there's a lot of hype around Twitch right now. A lot of people want to get involved and I have some very talented and very entertaining friends who can definitely put on a good show and teach you a thing or two about poker. Uh, as for feedback, you know, and stuff, feedback, suggestions, please and thank you, post them in the comments, anything and everything. I just answered all of last week's comments and the ones before. They were a lot of fun to read through, so I look forward to doing that on this video as well. I uh, hope the video wasn't too long, and I hope that my flight gets in on time so that I can see you tomorrow for Free Money Friday at twitch.tv forward slash grips. It's going to be a blast, and I wish you the best of luck with choosing your discipline so that February can be the month where you master yourself, so that March can be the month where you just master the game and master everybody else. So, uh, yeah, that's it. This has been Evan for Gripst.com. This right here, boom and boom, is why we want to be disciplined, because that is how you get those gold bracelets. And, uh, you know, you build yourself a legacy. So, any questions, hit me up. I'll be around. I'll be back in Canada very soon, and my focus is the team. It's my year. It's your year, too. Let's go out there. Let's get stacked.